Hello students, welcome to Unique Academy's YouTube channel. Today in this in-depth session of the current affairs, we are going to discuss a very important landmark judgment by the Supreme Court on the GST, that is goods and services taxes. So let's begin first by knowing what the news was. So the Supreme Court of India has ruled that the union and the state legislatures, that is union government and the state governments or the state uni par union parliament and the state parliaments have equal concurrent and distinct powers to enact GST legislation. So equal concurrent and district powers to enact GST legislation, that is one thing. And the second thing, those the GST council's recommendations are not binding on them. So these are the two points which have been very significantly asserted by the Supreme Court in its judgment. And it is going to have a larger implications on the taxation structure in India. So with that news, let's see what is the relevance of this particular news from the exam point of view. From the exam's point of view for prelims, all facts and the constitutional provisions regarding the goods and services tax are important. So one should be knowing them. Whereas for the mains examination, cooperative federalism and the impact of the Supreme Court decision in that can be stressed, for, uh, stressed as such. So with that relevance in mind, let's begin with our discussion on the goods and services tax. And we will first we will start with knowing what basically the goods and services tax is all about. So well, first thing, it is an indirect tax. Goods and services tax is an indirect tax. That is basically, uh, it is not directly paid by the customers directly to the government. And this took effect on July 1st, 2017 as a result of 101st amendment to the Indian constitution. So by 101st constitutional amendment, we introduced the GST in India, that is goods and services tax. And then this GST was introduced from this particular date, that is July 1, 2017. So it took effect from that. Now it has, what this after GST was introduced in India, what has happened? It has effectively replaced several indirect taxes in the country. So all other indirect taxes like that of the VAT or the service tax, excise and all those things are not existing right now. They are existing to certain specific domains where GST is not applied but for majority of or majority of the things these taxes have been gotten rid of. So remember they have replaced severe several indirect taxes in the country. Earlier cases we had to have we were having a lot of indirect taxes like that of service tax we are saying that. Now it is imposed on both manufacturer and sellers of the goods and the service providers. So it is imposed on all these components. Further the tax charge is normally factored into the seller's cost and the amount the client pays includes the GST. Okay, remember that. As a result, even if one is not an income taxpayer, one must pay a tax. So in a way, indirectly or indirectly, you are paying a tax. So that is what the point highlights. And now for the purpose of the tax collection, it has been divided into various slabs. Like for example, just like we have the slabs for the income tax, like be, uh, like those who earn more than 2 lakh or 10 lakh or 8 lakh. So these kind of slabs we are putting in income tax. So some these kind of slabs are also put over here. And the, for the purpose of tax collection. So these there are five slabs in the GST. One is no GST that is 0%. Another is 5% GST. Then we have 12% GST, 18% GST and 28% GST. So next time whenever you purchase any kind of bill, just look uh, at any kind of thing, you will get a bill and in that bill just see what amount of GST you have paid. Okay. And what are the types of GST also can be uh, reflected from your bill. So just see your bill in detail and you will get to know. Majority of you must have seen this also. But uh, Obviously, as those who don't know can look into all those things. So remember that there are five slabs, no GST, 5%, 12%, 18% and 28%. So moving ahead with that. Now, what are the types of goods and services tax? So first is the state's state good and services tax that is SGST. So simple. What is state goods and services tax? It is charged by the state government for intrastate services and goods transactions and this revenue is generally given to the state. So states also need certain kind of revenue. Now earlier cases there were various indirect taxes but now as we have got rid of one is G only one tax is there GST. So in that GST there is first step which is the SGST and this SGST is for the intrastate goods and services that are uh, actually utilized or consumed or manufactured. So for intrastate services and goods and transaction and this revenue is generally given to the state. So this is the revenue of the state government. Right? 
Second is the Central Goods and Services Tax. Now, it is also charged for any kind of intrastate transaction. So, again, intrastate transaction is there. So, then it can be applied of any services and the goods and it is collected by the central government. So, this basically GST is collected by the central government overall. So, central, this is the component of the central government. That is Central Goods and Services Tax. And then we have, this is majority of the times you will see these two things, components when you take any kind of bill, but this component may not be visible and that is integrated goods and service tax. So try to understand what it is. It is generally charged on interstate transaction of services interstate so from one state to another state if you have uh, if the goods and services are being provided then in that case integrated goods and services tax is applied and and is applied on exports and imports and both the state and st center government share this revenue so this is individual state government state uh, center government and this is basically shared between the center and the state government so these three are basically the types in which the gst is collected so state remember state goods and services tax central goods and services tax and then integrated goods and services tax so with this type let's move ahead and see the constitutional provisions which are there with respect to the gst these all are very important from the prelims point of view so the first constitutional provision is article 246 a that is special provision for the gst as we have seen 101st constitutional amendment was introduced and through that 101st constitutional amendment only we have the gst so in that context we have this one important article that is article 246 what does this article say the article gives the parliament and the individual state legislatures the authority to enact laws on the GST imposed by each of them. So state government and the central government both are having the right to create the laws and enact those laws regarding the GST. This is given by the article 246a. Remember that. Then the Indian parliament on the other hand has an exclusive legislative authority on interstate supply that is integrated goods and services tax. This particular on this IGST it is only the central government that can make a law or that is the Indian parliament that can make a law regarding that. And furthermore, until the GST council recommend some products are exempt from GST. Now, this is again, we will be discussing in few days only, uh, like petroleum products are there, petroleum crude, high speed diesel, motor spirit, natural gas, aviation turbine fuel, these are or even alcohol is there. Okay, these are not under the GST. So GST council, until and unless GST council recommends that, okay, we want a GST on this, we have created a consensus on this and now let's have GST on this. Still then, these are not coming under the GST. Now this also is given by this particular article 246A, that is special provisions of the GST. Now moving ahead and looking into the another provision, constitutional provision, we have article 269A that is levy and collection of GST for interstate supply. So if there is an interstate transaction or interstate exchange of goods and services, so in that case regarding the levy and the collection of GST, this article is all about. So let's see what it is. While article 246A gives the parliament sole authority to adopt laws relating to interstate supplies, the article 269A governs the allocation of money from such supplies between the center and the state. So obviously there has to be distribution of revenue between the center government and the state government. So this all will be looked into by this article the, under the articles provisions of the article 269A. So here article 269A governs the allocation. So it allow, it is regarding the allocation of money and that is between state center and the state. Now it gives the GST council the authority to make rules in this area. So this particular, this is again, that is, uh, uh, in a way related to the news also. So 269A is giving the right to the GST council that GST council is going to get make a decisions regarding this allocation of money and supplies between the center and the states. Now what is GST council? We will see in the next slide. So remember GST council is also like a constitutional body. It is created by the, in, it is mentioned in the constitution itself. So it gets power under the 269A. Now interstate supplies refer to the import products of services. So what is interstate supplies? Import of products or services. The central government now has the authority to levy IGST on import transactions. So right now we have seen in earlier part also integrated goods and services tax are levied by the central 
government on and again there are certain things which will be importing import and export also happen so on the imports uh, if there are certain things then do on those uh, gst will be lived by the uh, by the law made by the central legislature or applied by the central government now another constitutional provision which is very important is about the gst council that is article 279a as i said this is now a constitutional body because it is stated in the constitution so let's see what it is the article empowers the president of india to form the gst council so it is empowering the president of india so if someone asks you who creates the gst council so that it is the president of india a joint forum of center and the states okay it is a joint forum of the center and states created by the president of india now who are the members of this and who, what is the composition of this particular gst council the first one is obviously the union finance minister and it is, he is also the chairperson of this gst council then we have the union member of the state in charge of revenue or finance so that is state minister for finance or who is in charge of revenue or uh, he is also the member from these are from the central government or we can say central executive then the minister in charge of finance or taxation or any other minister nominated by the state government they are also the members so all the states whichever states are there in india they will nominate majority of the times it will be the state finance minister or someone nominated by the state government but in major time as i said it will be the state finance minister so again there is no compulsion as such so all these member all these uh, will be the participants of the gst council they will be the members of that now how does this gst council operate if we look into <clears throat> gst council what is it it is an apex group tasked with modifying reconciling or making recommendations to the union and the states on gst issues such as products and services subject to or exempt from gst model gst laws and so on so we can simply say whatever is required regarding the gst whether it is gst slabs whether it is new laws are required whether some new product has to be introduced into gst all this will be discussed and deliberated in the gst council so as such it is very very important body so if services even have to be exempted like particular product let's say they want to exempt it from the gst that also can be done by the gst council again there recommendations and deliberations and all those things will be there now how does this operate because this gst council operate in gst council obviously there will be a voting mechanism and the votings will be in what sense so let's see the gst council makes decisions with majority of not less than 3 quarters of the weighted votes cast so 3 quarters of the votes are required for the uh, for whatever decision if it has to be taken or applied so if let's say xyz decision was to be taken okay and then it will be passed if three quarters okay of the weight, weighted votes are in favor of that particular thing now how is the vote is distributed because there is a center and the state so center and the state they will not have the equal voting percentage equal weighting uh, voting weights so the center receives one third of the total votes cast so center will have one third of the total votes cast while other states combined receive the two thirds of the total votes cast so states will have two third and the center will have the one third share in all the votes so that is the weight of the votes in the gst council now till now the gst council has reached all of his decisions so this consensus so consensus is very important and if you reach to the consensus it is better rather than getting into the votings but this is the mechanism for voting this is important from the polities point of view and from the economics point of view also that decisions regarding the tax structure in india are taken in this way so moving ahead what is the supreme court's judgment like this is the most important thing that we have to see right because we are discussing it as a, as i say this is the main core of particular uh, this particular session so supreme court if we look into the background of this particular decision as to why the supreme court gave the decision the supreme court's decision came as confirmation of the gujarat high court ruling that the center cannot impose igst on ocean freight from indian importers so this is the background so 
Gujarat High Court had given a judgment earlier that center cannot impose the integrated goods and services tax on the ocean freight and the in, uh, from the Indian importer. So if Indian importer is bringing some material, let's say some capital goods or some other things. So now central government will not apply the IGST on this. This is what stated by the High Court, uh, Gujarat High Court. Now this obviously went into the Supreme Court. Now why it was said by that way? So let's see. Customs duty and GST are levied on the value of imported products. So there is a custom duty already there and the GST both are levied on the imported products, which includes the cost, insurance and the freight components. So these all are the components as such. Now the Central Board of Indirect Taxes and the Customs on the other hand proposed a 5% GST on the value of imported goods. So what was that? That the CBDT, uh, Central Board of Indirect Taxes and the Central Board for Indirect Taxes. These are the organizations. So, so here in this case, Central Board of Indirect Taxes and Customs, they wanted to, they proposed a 5% more GST on the value of value, final value of the imported goods with 10% of the value of imported items considered to be the ocean freight. So this was proposed by this particular body. Now, in addition to custom tax and GST, which is typically 28%, and paid as goods, this meant a 0.5% GST on the value of imported products and services. So this is the background. And if we see what the Supreme Court judgment is all about, the union and the state legislatures, central government has stated that the union and the state legislatures have equal concurrent and exclusive authority to enact the GST legislation. Right. So this is what we started with the news. Now we are looking into the exact judgment. Further, it reiterated that Article 246A of the Indian Constitution treats the union and the states as the equal units, giving both the union and the states the right to implement GST legislation simultaneously. This is also we started with the news that everyone has the right to make the legislation. Everyone in this sense means union and the states. Now further it stated that Article 279A, which establishes the GST Council, stipulates that neither the center nor the states are reliant on one another. So this is also it further reiterated. Further, the GST Council suggestions are the result of collaborative discourse between the union and states. Now this is what again was stated that the GST Council's suggestions are the result of collaborative discourse, collaborative discourse, whatever is being discussed in that sense between the union and the states. And there are only persuasive in nature and are simply recommended. Okay, that means they are only persuasive and they are recommendatory in nature and not compl compulsory to be followed. Now further, the court went on and said to treat them as legally binding would jeopardize fiscal federalism. So this is an important point This in the Supreme Court judgment that if you say or if you make the GST Council's recommendation mandatory, then what is going to happen? It is going to be legal. If you make it legally binding, then it is going to jeopardize the fiscal federalism. The states also need to have an autonomy in taking the decisions regarding the uh, regarding the taxation structures and the SGST and all those things. So the government's long running battle with the business to apply its IGST on the ocean freight that is the cost of transferring products internationally to India on reverse charge basis came to an end with the decision. So now the central government which was having implementing the IGST will come to an end with this particular decision and this obviously is going to imply that the business groups are going to be helpful. So like people, uh, many business groups, they have to import a lot many things. So the IGST which was applied on them will not be applied henceforth. The importers had claimed that the IGST was being lived twice on the same transaction because components of it were segregated. So it is it was not like one particular machine. So if the components were brought, then IGST was again being implemented. So one while importing, another time it was importing, so that we will be getting read out. This is what has been stated. This court found that a separate duty on Indian importers for the sale of services by the shipping line would be in violation of the Central GST Act because the Indian importer is required to pay IGST on composite supplies. So this is what the Supreme Court has stated in this judgment. So major takeaway from the Supreme Court judgment is that the recommendations of the GST Council are not mandatory on the states to be followed. This is an important judgment and this will get rid of IGST too. Moving ahead, what are the possible implications of this Supreme Court judgment? Now, because the court has indicated unequivocally, unequivocally that the GST Council recommendations have merely persuasive value, 
This decision could alter the landscape of GST rules that are amendable to the judicial review. So that means, see, first thing, if the Supreme Court is interfering and taking a decision in this particular thing, so tomorrow, if any GST laws are being passed, that means that they are bound to be coming under the judicial review. So this is the first one. So they are not immune to judicial review. This is because based on the GST Council's recommendation, the constitutionality of such measures can be contested. So you can change, check the constitutional validity of particular recommendation or particular decision taken by the GST. So that is changing. That's why we say it is changing the landscape as such. Now further, this decision will strengthen the spirit of cooperative federalism by emphasizing the importance of cooperative federalism as a necessary component of democracy's well-being. So we can state this decision will help in building the cooperative federalism in India. So as I said, this decision is very important. It is very landmark judgment on the GST. GST in itself is very, uh, what you can say, revolutionary taxation structure that was introduced in India. And now this decision of Supreme Court on the GST Council is again a very significant one. So we can surely expect a question on this particular topic. I hope you have understood whatever we have discussed in this particular session. That's it for this session. See you in another session. Thank you. Subscribe the Unit Academy's YouTube channel and press the bell icon for latest updates and videos.